Govinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We continue reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 3, Chapter 31. We are on Text 5. Matur Jagdhana Pana Dier Eda Dhatur Asammate Shetevin Mutra Yor Garte Sajantur Jantu Sambhave. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamishla Prabhupada. Deriving its nutrition from the food and drink taken by the mother, the fetus grows and remains in that abominable residence of stools and urine which is the breeding place of all kinds of worms. So we have been looking at the inside of the mother's womb. You know, we don't need to do any invasive procedure to see how the fetus is developing. Very clearly it was said, first month, what part of the fetus is growing, second month, third month, how the fetus is growing. You know, and then we get all excited. Oh, there's a baby in the womb. So nice, so good. But... Now, what is the child actually feeling inside, inside the womb? It's a, it's, he's being bitten by all kinds of worms. He's surrounded by stool and urine. We can't see all this inside. So we create a very, we create a very fantastic image in our minds. But this is what the baby in the mother's womb is going through. In the Markendya Purana, it is said that in the intestine of the mother, the umbilical cord, which is known as Apayayani, joins the mother to the abdomen of the child. And through this passage, the child within the womb accepts the mother's assimilated foodstuff. So the Markendya Purana says that, that how does the baby get the nutrition? is because he's connected with the umbilical cord to the mother. In this way, the child is fed by the mother's intestine within the womb and grows from day to day. So this umbilical cord is connected to the mother's intestine and from there, the nutrition is being passed to the baby. The statement of the Markendya Purana about the child's situation within the womb is exactly corroborated by modern medical science, and thus the authorities of the Puranas cannot be disapproved, as is sometimes attempted by the Mayavadi philosophers. So we can see now with the help of medical science that what the Puranas are telling us is actually true. You know, the, we can take the sonography of the baby growing in the womb and the Purana is already stating that yes this is how the the baby is growing and then so this goes to show the authority of the Puranas that the Puranas the Vedic scriptures the Shastras are not just imagination but they are authoritative since the child depends completely on the assimilated foodstuff of the mother during pregnancy, there are restrictions on the food taken by the mother. Too much salt, chili, onion, and similar food is forbidden for the pregnant mother because the child's body is too delicate and new for him to tolerate such pungent food. So why the mother has certain restrictions? Because whatever she eats, the baby is going to eat that, but the baby's body is just too tender to be able to digest and to accept or everything, you know. It's too delicate, the baby. Restrictions and precautions to be taken by the pregnant mother as enunciated in the Spriti scriptures of Vedic literature are very useful. We can understand from the Vedic literature how much care is taken to beget a nice child in society. So it's a science. The scriptures, they tell us, even before conception, what the consciousness should be so that the child that we are attracting, the soul that we are attracting is a good soul. The Garbhadhan ceremony before sexual intercourse 
was compulsory for persons in the higher grades of society. And it is very scientific. Other processes recommended in the Vedic literature during pregnancy are also very important. To take care of the child is the primary duty of the parents because if such care is taken, society will be filled with good population to maintain the peace and prosperity of the society, country, and human race. So, so much care is being given even before the conception, so that everyone can live peacefully in the world. But we say, no, 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 what is all this? Leave the scriptures. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And then we can see what is the state of affairs in the modern society. You know, there's so much unrest, so much um, manipulation. And so there is no peace in the world currently. So reading on. Pimi bhi shata sarvanga sauka sauku maria pratikshanam murcham apnoti uruklesha statriya te shuddhiter moho. Bitten again and again all over the body by the hungry worms in the abdomen itself, the child suffers terrible agony because of his tenderness. He thus becomes unconscious moment after moment because of the terrible condition. You know, so we uh, get so excited. Oh, there's a baby in the womb and we are thinking it's a really nice place for the child to be in. But here the scriptures are telling us that it is a very difficult position. And that's the reason birth is also called a suffering. And we forget it. We have forgotten. We have each of us been through this situation. But just because we have forgotten it, we think birth means very good. And every year we celebrate our birthday. You know, but this is the situation that the, the baby in the womb has to go through. He's being bitten all the time and he's because of the suffering. There's so much suffering, he's becoming unconscious. The miserable condition of material existence is not is not only felt when we come out of the womb of the mother, but is also present within the womb. Miserable life begins from the moment the living entity begins to contact his material body. So we are thinking, oh, by being in the womb of the mother, we won't be getting material miseries. No. Even inside the womb of the mother, the miserable situation is there. That is the nature of this material world. Unfortunately, we forget this experience and do not take the miseries of birth very seriously. So even though each of us have been through these miseries, because we have forgotten, we say, so what, you know? And we in fact celebrate, we celebrate our birthdays. Uh, but, and then we say, Anyway, I went through it and now I forgot it, so what? So again, when I have to deal with it, I will deal with it. And then again, I will forget it. But this is not what we are required to do. We should come out of this situation of birth, death, old age, and disease. Make a permanent solution, you know, and be situated in our real position as spiritual beings. In Bhagavad Gita, therefore, it is specifically mentioned that one should be very alert to understand the specific difficulties of birth and death. Just as during the formation of this body, we have to pass through so many difficulties within the womb of the mother. At the time of death, there are also many difficulties. So we, we read how at the time of death, there are so many difficulties. Now we are hearing inside the womb at the time of birth also there are so many difficulties. As described in the previous chapter, one has to transmigrate from one body to another and the transmigration into the bodies of dogs and hogs is especially miserable. But despite such miserable conditions, due to the spell of Maya, we forget everything and become enamored by the present so-called happiness which is described as actually no more than a counteraction to distress. 
you know, although we suffer so much in the womb of the mother, as soon as we come out of the womb and we see all the relatives who are who are looking down at us and thinking we are the the, the greatest, you know, we, we forget everything there. Then we say, oh, if I cry, everyone is coming to, to pamper me. Oh, this is such a great situation. Let me just cry and I will get whatever I want. And we forget all the miseries that we had to undergo. All this is happening by the illusion of Maya. Illusion of Maya. Katu Katu Tikshnoshna Labana Ruksham Latibhir Ulbane Matra Bhukte Opas Prishtaha Sarvan Gothita Vedanaha. Owing to the mother's eating bitter, pungent foodstuffs of food, which is too salty or too sour, the body of the child incessantly suffers pains which are almost intolerable. All descriptions of the child's bodily situation in the womb of the mother are beyond our conception. It is very difficult to remain in such a position, but still the child has to remain. You know, the child can't even get out of there, can't run away from there, can't, can't say anything, can't protest. He's confined in that place and in that position being head down for so many months, he, he can't get out of there. Because his consciousness is not very developed, the child can tolerate it. Otherwise, he would die. That is the benediction of Maya, who endows the suffering body with the qualifications for tolerating such terrible tortures. So Maya gives us the body, the consciousness, by which we, can, we are able to tolerate the suffering. Otherwise, the living entity, the soul, you know, is also agreeing to, to enter into the body of the pig and be happy in, in that situation, eating all sorts of abominable things, living in a very abominable way. And the pig is very happy. The living entity is very happy because the consciousness is... is, is has been covered to that degree. So similarly, because the child's consciousness is not developed, he's able to tolerate all this suffering. Ulbena sam vritas tasmen antrescha bahir avritaha aste kritva shira kuksha bhugna prishta shiro dharaha Placed within the amnion and covered outside by the intestines, the child remains lying on one side of the abdomen, his head turned towards his belly, and his back and neck arched like a bow. If a grown man were put in such a condition as the child within the abdomen, completely entangled in all respects, it would be impossible for him to live even for a few seconds. Unfortunately, we forget all these sufferings and try to be happy in this life, not caring for the liberation of the soul from the entanglement of birth and death. It is an unfortunate civilization in which these matters are not plainly discussed to make people understand the precarious condition of material existence. So nobody taught us. Nobody teaches us in any school that inside the womb of the mother, it's such a difficult position. You know, it's so terrible that we are eaten by worms and we are being, our skin is being burned by what, whatever the, the mother is eating. And, and the, the, the way the, the fetus is placed, the way the way the fetus is placed is uh, is said that if now we were to be in that position, we won't be able to live even for a moment. For a few seconds, if we are put in that position, we would die. But nobody tells us these things, you know. Nobody is telling us these things. But if we read the scriptures, the scriptures are telling the truth, and that's the reason. 
majority of the people don't want to read the scriptures anymore. Akalpa swanga chesta yam shakunta eva panjare tatra labda smriti deva karma janma shatot bhavam smaran dirgam anuchvasam sharma kim nama vindate. The child thus remains just like a bird in a cage without freedom of movement. At that time, if the child is fortunate, he can remember all the troubles of his past 100 births and he grieves wretchedly. What is the possibility of peace of mind in that condition? After birth, the child may forget about the difficulties of his past lives. But when we are grown up, we can at least understand the grievous tortures undergone at birth and death by reading the authorized scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam. If we do not believe in the scriptures, that is a different question. But if we have faith in the authority of such descriptions, then we must prepare for our freedom in the next life that is possible in this human form of life. So if we are able to, if, if we have the, the faith in the scriptures, what we are hearing, then we should try to not be again in such a difficult position. Taking on another birth, in, 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 it's such a terrible suffering that we are hearing in the womb of the mother. So we should try to make this life our last life. Put an end completely to birth, death, old age and disease. Get out of this material world and go back home, back to Godhead. We simply have to revive our love of God, which is there in everyone's heart. Each of us has love of God in our heart. But under this spell of Maya, we have simply forgotten that. So one who does not take heed of these indications of suffering in human existence is said to be undoubtedly committing suicide. It is said that this human form of life is the only means for crossing over the nations of Maya or material existence. So you see, uh, in the form of a, in the body of a dog or, or a pig, we, we, we can't do that. We, our consciousness is too low in those bodies for us to understand, oh, let me make this life my last life. I don't want to be taking another material birth. I don't want to be subjected to these material laws. It's only in this human life that we can make a solution. Only in this human form of life. We have a very efficient boat in this human form of body. And there is a very expert captain, the spiritual master. So the, boat, the human body is called as the boat. The boat for crossing over the ocean of material existence. The ocean of material existence is, is an ocean of nations, of ignorance, maya. And material existence is compared to a, to a vast, unlimited ocean. But this human form is a suitable boat. It is suitable. And who is the captain? The spiritual master. The, the, the authorized spiritual master, not just somebody who's calling himself spiritual master, but a true, true representative of God. And then the scriptural injunctions, the scriptures, they are like the favorable winds. They're directing, they're guiding. When we follow the scriptures, then they guide us. And the, the spiritual master, he's expert to tell us how we can follow the the regulations, the principles of the scriptures, what we should do, what we should not do, so that we can cross over this ocean of material existence. If we do not cross over the ocean of the nations of material existence, in spite of all these facilities, then certainly we are all intentionally committing suicide. So Krishna has given us these facilities. He's given us this body, this human form. And then he's, and in this human form, we are capable of following the instructions of the 
scriptures, we are capable of following the instructions of the spiritual master. And the spiritual master, you see, when we are in the body of a dog or a pig, we cannot follow the scriptures. You know, we don't have that consciousness that I have to follow the scriptures, I have to hear and chant and remember. I have to hear about Krishna from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. I have to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. In an in a animal's body, we can't do that. But in human body, we can. We can. So we should take the full advantage of being in this human form and try to make this life our last life by following the scriptures under the guidance of the expert spiritual master the bonified spiritual master. Arabya saptaman masa labdal bodo api ve pitaha ne katraste shuti vate vishtabur eva so daraha. Thus endowed with the development of consciousness from the seventh month after his conception, the child is tossed downward by the airs that press the embryo during the weeks preceding delivery. Like the worms born of the same filthy abdominal cavity, he cannot remain in one place. At the end of the seventh month, the child is moved by the bodily air and does not remain in the same place for the entire uterine system, becomes slackened before delivery. The worms have been described here as sodara. Sodara means born of the same mother. Since the child is born from the womb of the mother and the worms are also born of ferment fermentation within the womb of the same mother, under the circumstances, the child and the worms are actually brothers. We are very anxious to establish universal brotherhood among human beings, but we should take into consideration that even the worms are our brothers. What to speak of other living entities? Therefore, we should be concerned about all living entities. So that it's not only that the child is growing within the womb of the mother, the worms are also growing. So it's such a terrible situation, you know, the child is surrounded by worms and he's surrounded by all these abominable things. He's being pushed by the bodily airs, he's suffering inside and he can't even get out, you know. He, he can't get out of that, such a, such a helpless situation. And then Prabhupada is saying that, we are saying that to bring, we, we, we want to establish brotherhood only among human beings. No, all living entities are, uh, we, we are all, all parts and parcels of Krishna. All living entities are parts and parcels of Krishna. So we should establish this universal brotherhood among all living entities, not only with human beings. All, all souls belong to Krishna, not that only some souls who are in the body of human beings belong to Krishna. Everyone may be in the body of a human being or may be in the body of a worm. All are parts and parcels of God. Any comments or questions? for what we've been reading. How does it sound I, when we're hearing? I'm sorry? I have a question. You, say, you said in the womb the child is suffering. Is it because of his karma or the mother's karma that he's attached to? Both could be both. Okay. Could be both. But of course, we are individually, we suffer by, because of our own karma. You know, but yeah. then we also have collective karma. That's the reason we are in a particular family. Then we are in a particular country, in a particular society. That's where the shared karma is. So it could be both. But, but irrespective, yeah, irrespective of whose karma, the suffering is there, you know. And we, we think that, oh, it's such, a, it's such a 
great situation, but here we are hearing from Bhagavatam how terrible the situation is within the womb of the mother. And, and outside, we really don't know. You know, we, we just create some imaginary things in our head. We romanticize. So many things we romanticize in our head. And the modern civilization encourages us in this romanticizing of these false ideas, whereas the truth is completely different. And that's the reason birth is also being called has been called as a suffering. You know, like they never imagine that the baby in the womb of the mother is being bitten by worms, that whatever she's eating is affecting the skin of the baby. You know, sounds terrible. Did anyone have any, any other question or comment? Thank you, Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you so much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki chai, Shla Prabhupada ki chai, Gaur Bhattam Vinda ki chai, Hare Krishna.